Okay, welcome to the weekly call for this week. I'm gonna go through all these pairs as usual, and I'm also gonna do gold and Nasdaq, just as an extra extra stuff to look at for next week. And there's a trade on Nasdaq that I'm looking at, so that will give you some something to look at. But what I see on gold on the weekly time frame then is first of all, I mean this is in the past, but this demand zone has been respected, you know, price push down, push in, push up. This is a clear liquidity sweep, you know, it's that typical kind of candlestick uh chart pattern, even though you Chart patterns don't really work all the time. They they do have some kind of truth to them. And looking for a liquidity sweep pattern like this, you know, push down, push up, inversion FUG where you've got imbalance to the downside and then imbalance to the upside. For me, and just as a rule, it shows a liquidity sweep. So that's what I was looking at. Also, just for extra confirmation, you know, you've got this demand zone as well that's been respected. So price to me is going bullish. And the next place I would look to go long from is this weekly demand zone. But until then. What we can see is prices pushed above these highs, tapped into this last point of supply, the last candle before the imbalance down, and now it looks to be re um, reversing from it. So my bias is going to be bearish. And again, last week, you know, clear, strong bearish candle after reacting from this PD array. So I'm looking for a pullback and then continuation. That's kind of what my bias is just from the weekly. Then going on to the daily, you can see price trending up, and then we got a change of character and left behind this daily supply zone. So tapped into the weekly order block and also tapped into this daily order block. So that enough is just confirmation anyway. So tapped into there, reacted from it. And now we've got another daily supply zone that I will look for price to go back into and then continue down. So that is my bias for the week. Four hour, I'll look for entries and there isn't really anything clear. The only thing I do see that I'll probably look for is this candle bit of an indecision candle with all this area you know you could call all of this area some accumulation or distribution range and then price reacted off it and distributed downwards so leaving it in balance below it and creating some liquidity below the zone which is always nice above these highs so that's going to be some liquidity to just extra confirmation for price to take out into the zone and then hopefully reverse them so probably look for a five minute reversal or you can just enter straight from the four hour zone but I'll look for a lower time frame confirmation in one of the kill zones to go short. That's what I see on gold. On Nasdaq, if I go back up to the weekly and just delete everything, something similar. Price looks to be going bullish. Now we had this this whole area here, but it keeps getting tapped into. And as you know, or maybe you don't know, but when price keeps mitigating the same same zone, it's likely it's going to break. So my bias on Nasdaq is to take out these highs. I think that is a good point to target. And that's why I'm going to be looking for a price to make a pullback or whatever. Look for an entry to take it up there. Obviously the most recent high that we could target is over there. But what I'll be looking for is just any any place to go long, target internal liquidity within the day or the week. So we don't always need to look for these external liquidity points. But what we have got on the weekly time frame, what gave me my bias is reacting from this imbalance. And also taken out liquidity. So have a sweep of this low over there. And then we shot up. So price could return to this weekly imbalance or the weekly supply zone, or demand zone, sorry. And react from it, or I could do something else. I'll go down to the daily to see. But actually, before I do that, I will mark up my previous week high and low. I didn't do that on gold, but it's always the same. Very rule based. You can't choose a different high to someone else. It's just it's always going to be a set price everyone so that's good you can have so the weekly imbalance is actually below the previous week low and there's some balance down here the price could come to you know the last bit of imbalance the, the first bullish candle that created this strong move up and price could return to that or what i'm looking for a bit risky but i'll get to my reasoning within this last week what we saw was a strong push up leaving behind this demand zone price came back to it and reacted from it again you know liquidity sweep into the zone, taking out this low over here, and then pushing up. So what I would be looking for is just a, my actually extend that over there to encompass all of that. I would be looking for a long trade, pull back to this point, and then take up the high. Because I think when you've got NASDAQ and pairs like that, where it's indices and they just do like to trend, you're not always gonna get a deep pullback. Sometimes you just get a shallow pullback and this looks like a nice zone. The order flow is bullish. We tapped into a previous demand zone and then we've got another demand zone here. 
So my expectation is price to come down and then continue up. So this is what my limit's gonna be. And I'll send it through to the group uh, outside this video as well. That's what I'm looking for on those pairs. Then AUD, USD, what we see. This is a bit of a confusing pair. As my initial bias was bullish. You know, we got strong push up last week or the week before last week. But then last week we had a strong push down. So it could go either way. You know, we took out liquidity on the sell side and the buy side. So it could go anywhere. But I'll mark up previous week high and low just as a good starting point if you're not too sure what price is doing. And then we can go down to the daily and look for stuff. You know, obviously look for PD arrays on the weekly time frame as always. But there isn't really much. You know, obviously we're still kind of in this uh, weekly demand zone, I guess. And then on the daily, sometimes you get a bit of a clear picture. I'll just leave that weekly demand zone just so we can get a clear picture. And we are in this daily demand zone uh, on the daily, yeah, on the daily time frame. So something similar to this, if you look at this kind of setup, you know, you've got the daily daily order block and then strong push up. And so even though this could have been a liquidity sweep, you know, strong push up and strong push down, it could just be the fact that the time frame is saying that even though that's not what actually happened and we got strong push up, pull back and now we're getting a continuation so that is my bias uh, it could go either way but for me you know we had this equal lows taken out and a strong push up so my bias is going to be that there's going to be a pullback and a continuation which looks like there's going to be and then on the four hour time frame what you can see is this is the daily uh demand zone and we can refine it just to that last bearish candle the last kind of area before the strong push up the price tapped into that and now looks to be reacting from it so what i'd be expecting is a push up and then a pullback and then we can go long so that's what i'll be looking for you know you've got this wicked candle as a potential place if price pushes up and then return to that so that's what i'll be looking for but i will send it through to the group when anything happens obviously and euro usd this is pretty much looking the same as last week it's not really much is happening i will delete all of this though and start again so yeah not really much happening on this week i doubt there's going to be any setups I will likely just look at what I was looking at last week, just expecting a pullback and then continue up. But we can see what happens during the week. So going on to the daily. Yeah, my expectation is still just going to be pushing down into this zone and then push up. So I'll keep my limits on this area. Targeting now the last week's high. So Expecting these lows as liquidity, price push down early, maybe Monday, Tuesday, and then strong push up. So that's what I'm expecting for next week on Euro USD. On the four hour, there wasn't really much else, you know. Could see a reaction from this demand zone, which uh, I'll get into on GBP USD. But other than that, I'll play it, play it safe, wait for a strong pullback, and then push up. So on GBP USD, you know, price has actually reacted off this demand zone that I marked up. I was expecting a deeper pullback, but didn't do that. And so this is going to be pretty much similar to EURUSD on here. Just move these to current week. And the previous week low is just there. So this is going to be more similar to AUD USD, I guess. We're going to be looking for a reaction off here, pullback and continuation. Obviously, price could still take out these liquidity uh, of the previous week low, tap into this demand zone, and then go up. So that could be a nice setup. And I'll look for, you know, lower time frame confirmation in this zone. So I can just set some alerts and I'll keep you updated on that. And then on the four hour, yeah, so we reacted from this demand zone, looking for a push up and then a pullback to another demand zone and then continuation to take out these highs. So that's my bias for next week. Bullish on GBP USD. Then on USD CAD, unfortunately, yeah, it got taken out of this trade. I just think it does happen because it does happen quite a lot when you've got liquidity swept over here and then you get pushed down and the last point of supply sometimes the high just gets swept and pushed down but sometimes it doesn't and you can get nice risk rewards so it was either you know place my stop loss above here and have a lower risk reward which could be possible or have a lower win rate and higher risk reward which is what i went for and they didn't play out this time but sometimes it does so you just got to play the probability game and know that in the long run you're going to be uh, going to be profitable so on the weekly time frame I will adjust these for the current week, or the current last week. And then the, the high time frame set is the same as last week. So we swept these highs and I'm looking to target maybe these lows and the previous week low. You know, strong liquidity sweep above this high and then we push down, push up and push down. So it's kind of like your textbook 
SMC setup. You've got your high over here, whatever. Then you come and sweep this high, have a push down, pull back to a demand zone, and then push down. That's kind of what's happening here. And I almost caught it, but just a bit too, not greedy, but just uh, trying to catch those high risk rewards, which doesn't always pay off. But these textbook SMC setups do work. You just need to look out for them. This is effectively what it was. You know, a lower time frame is going to look exactly the same as this. And it does, but this is what you got. This is the setup I was looking for, and this is the setup that we got here. And so my bias is going to be bearish. Price is expecting to go down. Hopefully take out these lows and these lows. If anything could happen, you know, we're on the weekly time frame. We're not trying to catch a whole month's move down here. We're just trying to catch lower time frame uh, moves in the direction of the higher time frame trend. That's how I trade. And if that's how you trade, or if that's how you want to trade, then great. This uh, community is hopefully going to be good for you. Ask me any questions and I can teach you my ways. But onto the daily time frame. I'll just delete all of this. Uh, yeah, so what we got price tapped into this zone again. And you know, it's respecting this daily order block, daily supply zone and turned around you know on friday we got wick up push down so my advice is going to be continue down uh anything on the floor that i see not really you know there's a wick here price could return to there's also just the whole actual supply zone so i might wait for price to show a push down you know we had a close below there so there's a change of character so we could actually maybe get away of just entering straight off here uh, let me go down to the two hours see if there's anything nice uh we could get a deeper pullback, but we might not. So I think this could be a good trade that I will enter. Just from there, and then target previous week low. So that is probably something I'm going to get in on. And I will send it through to the group as well, outside of the video. And then finally, USD CHF. Again, just missed this trade, unfortunately. So you won't always get them. Otherwise, it's going to be nice. I think it's going to continue down to down there. But yeah, you're not always going to get get tapped into your trades. I'll leave I'll leave the limits there just uh just in case you know we take out more liquidity and then go down. So I still think that's a good setup. And we could use the previous week high uh, as some added liquidity. So mark that up. And the low is now down here. But yeah, the setup's the same. You know, I reacted off this supply zone. Not that one. Took out liquidity uh, all over the place. So we reacted off this supply zone. Took out liquidity over there, and then on the four hour, you know, took out more liquidity. Took out more liquidity, respecting all these supply zones and imbalances. And uh, my structure is bearish, so we were bullish. So then we got pushed down and change of character, and now we're bearish. You know, having a pullback, and then we're going to hopefully continue down again. So this is what I'm looking for in this setup. In this week, you know, we could if we get pushed down maybe look for a confirmation entry in this zone i look for a lower time frame here just because there is that zone above but i'm not going to set limits there i'm going to keep my limits from above here hopefully price takes out liquidity there and continues down that would be ideal but these are my setups this week if you're looking at different pairs and want me to have a look at them then just yeah let me know if there's anything you see if there's anything you disagree with then again let me know and i'll get a video out on how to spot pullbacks and any other educational videos that i think will be helpful for you but yeah